Recently, I upgraded my 5.5 year old PC and built a new one. Part of the process was deciding if I should stick to my old Yamaha MR816 CSX Firewire audio interface and buy a Texas Instruments PCI card since those are the most compatible and reliable ones or if I should save the money for the card and buy a brand new USB audio interface instead. There is always this ongoing debate whether Firewire, USB 2 or USB 3 or even Thunderbolt is the best and most reliable solution to connect audio interfaces to your computer. But since Yamaha announced that they will no longer support the MR816 CSX and its drivers, I felt even more convinced that it was time to say goodbye to Firewire and to take the plunge and buy a brand new audio interface that will work with a variety of devices such as my PC and my iPad Pro 2020. Since an audio interface is the heart of any studio, I did a lot of research and it took me quite some time to find the perfect audio interface for my needs. So I decided to shoot this video to guide you through my decision process and hopefully to help anyone who is currently looking for a new audio interface themselves. I purchased the Yamaha MR816 CSX back in 2008 when it came out and had been very satisfied with it. The only thing that bothered me was its size, because I never used all the input and output checks and it took so much space on my desk, space that I could use otherwise for other things. For example, my new ultrawide LG monitor. By the way, if you are interested in that review, I posted a link for you in the top right corner. Some of you may be wondering why I purchased such a big audio interface in the first place. Well, I mainly produce music for advertising, film and the music industry. I produce music all by myself and just occasionally I record vocals and or instrumentalists. That's why it is mandatory for me to have two individual headphone outputs, so I can deploy different mixes to the singer or instrumentalist and myself while recording. Back in 2008 and still true today, it is hard to find a compact audio interface with two individual headphone outputs. Of course, you can buy an additional preamp, but what's the point of buying a compact audio interface when you have to spend extra money for additional gear to make it work? Another very important fact to consider when buying an audio interface are the reliability of its drivers and the overall latency performance. Those two things were the reasons why I first looked at what ARM-E has to offer. ARMY audio interfaces have a very good reputation and I did own an ARMY Fireface 400 back in 2005 and was very satisfied with its performance and the audio quality of the preamps and the AD converters. The Babyface Pro FS is the latest addition to their audio interface range and it was one of the three audio interfaces I considered getting, before I eventually purchased the one I'm using right now. The two problems with the RME Babyface Pro FS were that it does not come with two individual headphone outputs and that it doesn't have a SPDIF connection. The RME support was very helpful and suggested other interfaces that would have matched my needs. But I would have ended up with the same form factor as the Yamaha MR816 CSX loaded with features I would never use and a very high price tag. The second audio interface of choice was the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. Everybody seems to rave about its sound quality, unison preamps and high quality converters. But what kept me from getting this one was that only the Apollo X4 comes with two individual headphone outputs along with a super expensive price tag of 2249 euros. Another thing to keep in mind when purchasing an UAD audio interface is that it needs a Thunderbolt connection that requires an additional Thunderbolt PCI card on PCs. Important to know is that Thunderbolt on PC is not as reliable as on the Mac platform. And the last reason why I didn't want to buy an Apollo X4 was that you basically buy into an ecosystem that is very expensive due to their proprietary plugin format. And honestly, I hardly use the DSP effects on my Yamaha interface. So why spend all this money for something you don't really need? Then all of a sudden Motu announced their brand new Motu M2 and M4 line and I was really interested in those 
spins, they're priced at around 200 and 290 euros, depending on which model, and that seemed very reasonable. But unfortunately, those two also only come with a single headphone output, and on forums, users started to report driver problems and performance issues on PCs. Then, finally I came across one audio interface that has all the features and form factor I was looking for, plus reliable drivers and a one-of-a-kind user interface. The Arturia AudioFuse Rev2. The Rev2 version is a 2020 model and successor of the AudioFuse Rev1 that was released in June 2017. The AudioFuse Rev2 now comes with a refined audio path, new mechanical design and a firmware upgrade that also comes with the AudioFuse Creative Suite, a collection of software effects and instruments. First of all, I need to highlight the packaging. It reminds me of an Apple product. The box looks very well designed and is also perfect to transport the audio interface should you ever consider traveling with it and need some additional protection. The box includes the audio interface, all necessary cables and a registration code for the AudioFuse Creative Suite. I really love the design of the AudioFuse and Arturia seems to have put a lot of thought and effort in its usability and appearance. Compared to other audio interfaces, the AudioFuse contains all the important buttons and controllers physically on the device itself. It can be used without you ever needing to open the software for it. Having said that, it is important to point out that while all controllers are accessible on the device itself, the AudioFuse remains one of the most compact audio interfaces on the market. The chassis is made of a unibody aluminum housing that has a very robust build. When transporting and to prevent the audio interface from collecting dust, it comes equipped with an aluminum lid that keeps it protected and also doubles as a stand. This makes it great for use in a studio, on the road or even on stage DJing. And did I mention already that it looks very cool on your studio desk? The AudioFuse provides three different power modes. When you use it on your computer, it is recommended to use the included universal power supply to enable its full power mode. Doing so will let you take advantage of the maximum input and output level of plus 24 dBU. If you are using the AudioFuse on the road, you can use a custom two-headed USB cable that comes shipped with the device. This allows you to switch to the on-the-go operation without even having to use a power supply. The so-called green mode will minimize the battery consumption of your laptop. The third option is that you can use the AudioFuse with a tablet or phone by using a power bank. This allows you to make music literally everywhere. The top panel is divided in three sections. Monitoring, input channels and a dedicated phone section. The monitoring section includes a big knob wheel to adjust the overall volume output. Additionally, you can mute, dim, sum your mix to mono and quickly switch between two sets of reference speakers at the touch of a button. On the top right corner there is also a mixing knob that allows you to adjust the mix of the direct input signal with a computer signal. This comes especially handy when you record an instrumentalist or singer and you want to avoid any latency. Listening to the try input signal makes recording an ease. I have to admit that I was never really a fan of the DSP effects the Yamaha MR816 CSX came with, so I really didn't miss those on the Arturia AudioFuse Rev2 at all. You can always use effects on your DAW's input channel and depending on the buffer settings you can tweak it to little or no latency. And as I mentioned earlier, the AudioFuse Rev2 comes packed with Arturia Creative Suite, including some of the best software effects and instruments on the market. The two main input channels feature all the controls that you need to record. A 48 volt phantom power button a face in word button to correct any issues before recording, a pad and instrument button and an input gain knob to adjust the volume of the input. This brings us to one of the highlights of this device, the headphone checks. AudioFuse has two independent headphone outputs, each with their own volume control. Another great feature is that each output comes with a quarter and mini check port. 
so you can plug your headphones in and start monitoring without having to search for those annoying adapters we all lose sooner or later. The headphone section contains a mono button and the option to switch between cues, along with a knob wheel where you can adjust the volume. The headphone input checks are located at the front of the audio interface. The rest of the checks are located on the back side of the device. Altogether, the audio interface comes with the following input and output checks. Two microphone inputs, four line inputs, two line outputs, two pairs of monitor outputs, two headphone outputs that are DC coupled, MIDI I.O., two effect inserts, aided with either 8 in, 8 out up to 48 kHz or 4 in and 4 out up to 96 kHz, SPDIF in and out and word clock in and out and a micro USB 2 data connection. Worth mentioning is the USB 2.0 hub that allows you to plug in up to three USB sticks. I use those for my Steinberg and iLock dongles. Now, let's talk about the most important thing all of us consider when evaluating an audio interface, the sound quality. The preamps and AD converters are top notch and compared to my Yamaha MR816 CSX, I can definitely tell that they are a huge step up in quality. To my ears, the preamps sound more transparent and more dynamic than the ones on my old audio interface. Other users and reviewers even say that they are on par or even better than the ones UAD uses. Well, I think everybody should decide for themselves and trust their own ears. Each unit also comes with a certification that includes detailed measurements of each preamp. All of them have a very low signal to noise ratio of around about minus 131.5 dB, a dynamic range of about 119.3 dB, a very low distortion of minus 107.9 dB and a flat frequency response plus minus 0.02 dB in the range of 20 Hz and 20 kHz. Arturia is very proud that they designed the microphone preamps from the ground up and that they've decided not to use any third-party integrated operational amplifiers in order to have total control over the performance of each component. And as I mentioned earlier, the sound quality is really, really good. Also, the AD converters. But since I own a Neumann KH750 DSP, I use the SPDIF connection with my Arturia AudioFuse Rev2 and bypass any conversions between the analog and digital realm. Another important topic I want to tackle in this video is the latency performance. Compared to my previous Firewire audio interface, the AudioFuse outperforms it in every regard. Setting Cubase 10.5.2 to a 128 sample buffer results in a 5.4 millisecond input and 4.5 millisecond output latency. Despite of the Firewire connection, the MR816 CSX had almost double the latency. So, are there any negative sides of the Arturia AudioFuse Rev2? Well, the interface gets really hot while using it and I was hoping Arturia would fix that with a 2020 model. Some owners complain about the mini USB connection on the back of the device which tends to come loose. So far, I did not have any issues with the USB connection, but I have to admit that I use my audio interface stationary at my studio and leave it basically untouched. Some people on the internet also seem disappointed that the audio interface only supports USB 2.0. Arturia claims that they ran many tests with different connections and got the best results using USB 2.0. As I mentioned before, the audio fuse surpasses the performance of my previous Firewire interface in every respect and so far I have yet to miss the USB 3.0. So this brings us to my verdict. For me personally, the AudioFuse Rev2 is the most perfect and compact audio interface to date. The audio interface delivers uncompromising audio quality and is packed with all the features a musician with the same profile such as myself will ever need. 
I added a link to the shop where I purchased the Arturia AudioFuse Rev 2 on the info box below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And please leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you are interested in more tech and music related topics and reviews. Thank you so much for watching and have a great one.